there. My name is Bevan Fields, and I'm a student at Millersville University, less than 10 minutes from here. Um, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about two of my closest friends. Um, they're both incredibly hardworking people, um, and they're struggling just to get by right now. Um, one of them is the, the most hardworking person I know. She works about four jobs. She's also a tutor at school. She plans to go to NYU and be a neurosurgeon. Um, but right now, she's paying so much for school that she doesn't even have a bed. Um, my other friend, uh, also an incredible person, he can't work very much because of his health, and he has also been sleeping on the floor since school started. Um, I'm part of a, a campaign right now that's fighting for free higher education because we believe that education is a human right. Um, but too many students are going through the same struggles as my friends, um, and even those that don't graduate with a lifetime of debt. Um, and our education system right now, more than ever, has become something that's less for students and more for the people who are profiting off of us. Um, so I want to know if you believe that free higher education is the right, and since that's a long-term goal, what will you do in the short term to protect people like my friends who have nothing, nothing? Waving in college would certainly is support a uh, education benefit for anybody who earns that right to go to school. And what I mean by earns that right, it doesn't mean that it's just free, but you have to qualify to earn that freedom, meaning that you have to do your schoolwork. Okay? But I, I don't see a reason why we can't have uh, education funding. But as you said, we not, we're not going to get there overnight just because we say we want it, because there's a lot of pushback from the private education system that currently exists in this nation. Um, however, at a community college level, uh, I, I think there's no reason why we can't train our workforce at, on the public's uh, tax dollar so that we have workers available to do the types of new tech jobs that we're going to need uh, for our renewable energy economy. I would like to see this get to a completely 100% renewable energy uh, grid in America by 2040. And to do that means we're going to have to educate a lot of people, which means we have to make funding for this type of situation uh, available now to get our students and our curricula ramped up to be able to meet that need. Um, so I hope that helps answer your question. Thank you. I think I'm pretty clear where I stand on education. So, uh, and I'll repeat it. I, I think that education is the key. Getting out of poverty, education is the key to building a workforce. Education is the key to growing an economy. Education is the key to building a stronger military. You know how passionate I'm about education, and we need to make that affordable for everyone. It's just not a K-12 system. We have to start with early childhood programs, we have to have a K-12 system, and we have to have a strong post-secondary system. I was fortunate because when I went to school, I got my bachelor's degree, I had a federal subsidized student loan. I, had, I worked hard and I paid that loan back. That program is now being threatened. President Trump and Boris Becker said they want to eliminate it. All right, so we need to make sure that those subsidized loan programs exist until we can make education free for everyone. All right, but in the short term, let's get kids the opportunity to get to school in the first place and so they incur debts when they come out with a degree, they have more debt than what they can earn. All right, so, so, so the uh, other thing, we have to worry about the privatization. Not just the privatization of K-12 system, which I already talked about, but there's also a system of moving up there to privatize higher education as well. The last Gallup poll, Republicans said that they don't support higher education. They rarely see higher education go away and become a private system. We know what happened to Trump University. Right? <laughs> if Trump's his job is he doesn't educate, he makes a profit, and the kids walk away with debt and, 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 no, and no place to go. DeVry University is another one, it's the same situation. President of Brian Price was just appointed in the Trump administration in the Office of Education. Okay, again, to privatize post-secondary education. Uh, so it's, it's a situation that's very bleak right now and it needs to be changed. It has to be changed by getting President Trump out of the White House. As I said before, we got to get Betsy DeVos out of the Secretary of Education because we need to make higher education affordable and free for everyone because it is the key to growing this nation up. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. Your question was enough to nearly set off an anxiety attack for me. 
as someone with a crushing amount of student loan debt myself, uh, even thinking about this issue sometimes is scary. <laughs> and uh, I know that, I, I can tell you that you know, uh, Christina had her share of student loan debt as well. Uh, you know, she worked uh, her way through college uh, in the same ways. She took out loans. She did what we were all supposed to do. Everybody tells us that you need the four year, uh, you need to go to a four year university. You need a degree to be successful. So that's what everybody goes and does. Um, in the short term, I think most importantly, we can put policy solutions in place that can address or at least offset some of the negative impact and consequences of our student uh, of our student debt society and of the crushing amount uh, of money that, that people are putting into higher education. Uh, and I think that starts with uh, with maybe loan forgiveness. I think it starts with uh, using using programs that are training technical uh, training for technical skills, uh, programs that are providing associate's degrees, programs that are providing certificates uh, that ne don't necessarily need uh, a full four-year degree to find, uh, to, ma to be matched with a job that is both high paying and is something worthwhile that you want to invest in when you're young and just coming out of college, because that's the other thing. How many people do you know that got out of college and started working a job just because it was the first thing available and now they are working in something that is completely different than you know, what they had ever anticipated but they don't want to start over. And it, I, I personally have so many friends that are sort of in that category that it, it's it's hard to, to think of what they're going through and why they had to make the, the decisions that they had to make. So yes, we should be doing something. And Christina is going to do something when she gets to Washington to change this. Thank you. That's a good question. And it's absolutely unacceptable that your friends are, don't even have a bed to sleep on. Um, so thanks for sharing their stories and that bringing that to the public. Um, we can do better. Just simply, we can do better. We can afford as a country to do free tuition, tuition free uh, public education. When K through 12 education was a pathway to the middle class in this country, we decided to make it free. We invested in it. And I think we need to remember as a country what we used to do, like the New Deal policies that were kind of built at a time not that much unlike now, with the greatest income divide that we've ever had, um, of looking at what could actually create a pathway to the middle class. Education is at the core of that. And now when you need a, a college education to get a decent job, job or a, a trade education, something that's going to be able to advance you beyond high school, that also needs to be a right and not a privilege just for uh, the folks who can afford it, because that only helps to increase this growing gap between the rich and the poor in this country. So we need to invest in it and we can do it, we can afford it, and we've done it before as a country. So this isn't rocket science. This is making a choice about what matters most to us. And the bedrock of a democracy is an educated populace, right? And the more we are uneducated or not uh, investing in that kind of future, look at what we're getting too uh, as a country around you know, people showing up to vote and, and who we're voting for. Um, you know, this, these are big picture, big picture issues. So um, I also wanted to say too, people come out of college right now with an average of $37,000 in debt. It's unacceptable. I actually had to put my own student loans, I'm 43 years old, and I put my own student loans on forbearance to run for Congress. So take that as a story and recognize that my kids aren't that away, far away from college at this point either. I feel this viscerally as a person, as a person in a working family. We have to do better, and this is not, so it should not be a privilege in this country. Okay, that ends this portion of the questions, and uh, we're near the end here. I just want to give a few announcements. First, let's give a round of applause for the candidates that answered the questions. On behalf of Lancaster Stands Up, I want to thank all the candidates for their time today.